every speaker has to do this exercise. It's making fun of yourself. Now, it might seem a little counterintuitive. No, I'm an expert. I want to seem very confident. Well, it takes a confident person to poke fun of themselves. In this exercise, you're going to think about something that your kids say about you that is not that flattering. What are people joking about you behind your back? What negative defects do people see when they meet you? Do they see you're overweight? Do they see your receding hairline? Well, today I'm going to show you that that is not a receding hairline, that is a punchline. The exercise is a simple formula. It goes like this, I'm, and insert something that's a little embarrassing about you. Don't use like lactose intolerant because nobody can see that. It's great if it's something you can, people can see about you. Maybe your ethnicity, maybe it's uh, something about your body, your height, your hair. Um, and if you don't have anything like that, then pick something psychological, that you're um, a criticizer, that you're controlling, um, but it can't be something, I'm a wonderful, lovable human being. Next, we're going to add this word, woohoo! So what we do here is what we call in comedy a turn. We admit something negative, but then we go woohoo, and it makes people laugh. The next part of the joke is you're going to explain why you've just gone woohoo by saying this line. There are advantages to being bald, to being fat, to being negative, to being insensitive, and you're going to come up with some funny reasons why it's great to have this negative characteristic. Comedy formula, making fun of yourself. I'm, insert your defect, woohoo! Hey, there's advantages to being, repeat your defect. List three advantages to having your defect. Watch this example of how this formula works. Hi, I'm Ken Iverson, and people say I sweat way too much. Woohoo! <laughs> but there are advantages to sweating way too much. Here in California, most of you experienced a drought for the last four years. Not where I am. <laughs> I walk onto the subway platform at BART and people open their umbrellas. <laughs> I can squeeze in and out of very tight spaces. I've saved a fortune on skin lotion. And people say I'm even developing my own new scent. Now you try it, here's how. Here's where we're going to make fun of ourselves. First thing to do is create a list. The first list is, what do people see when you walk out on stage? What do they see? Do you have anything that's striking looking? Anything that's odd or unusual? Are you excessively short? Are you excessively tall? Now pause the video and work on this. Go through your speech and look at your stories. Is there any time where you talk about not having confidence, any kind of defect of yours, maybe you were excessively scared, any kind of quote unquote negative quality or defect that you mention in your speech? Think through your speech and make a list of those qualities here. Now pause the video and work on this. Your last list is make a list of what you think people are joking about behind your back. This could be you're a micromanager, you're really bossy, they do the B word. And if you don't think people are saying anything negative about you behind your back, you might want to say, hey, I'm in denial. Woohoo! Now pause the video and work on this. Now, pick some qualities that you can work with because not everybody has something overtly physical about them that audiences notice. But pick three things that you want to work with. 
Pause the video now and work on it. The way this formula goes is you say, I'm fat. Woohoo! So otherwise, if you name your defect and you just go, I'm short or I'm a micromanager, it sounds like you're complaining. So you want to use the word woohoo after it. I'm a micromanager. Woohoo! Next, you want to say, you point to the audience as if somebody is heckling you and you're responding by saying, hey, there are advantages to being whatever your defect is, and then you name them. I'd like you to write at least five advantages for each of your defects. This, you can get funny, use your imagination, just let it go. Watch some examples from my workshop of people doing this exact exercise. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Lee Zasloff, and I am bitchy. Woo you know, there are a lot of advantages to being bitchy. You know those telemarketers that call you every other minute, even on your cell phone? Well, they don't stay on the phone for very long when they call me. And the people that come to my door peddling their religion, uh-uh, they are out of there. And... I can cut in line at the supermarket anytime I want, and I don't give a damn. Good morning. My name is Doug Lauer, and I've been told I'm overweight. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> now, there's advantages to that. People come up and they say, hey, Doug, where's your favorite place to eat? <laughs> I'm shade in the summer, warm in the winter. <laughs> the best part? is nobody, and I mean nobody, asks you to sit in the middle seat on an airplane. Now you try it. Pause the video now and work on it. Using making fun of yourself to deal with hecklers. This formula is to you think I'm, insert the insult that someone else has said, got it, yes, sometimes I am. Matter of fact, insert exaggeration. Watch this example of how this formula works. This is a technique we comics use to handle hecklers in the audience. What we do is we validate the heckler. It might seem that we're just you know, doing put down jokes, but that's not what we do. What you do is you let the person who's heckled you dig their own hole while you keep your dignity. This the told me, wrote me and said she used this. She said, like, a, a, a client came up and said, oh, this report you gave, I can tell you're a complete idiot. You don't get what we're doing. Now, what would you normally do if someone called you a complete idiot? Oh, how dare they call me that? That is not right. I'm going to do ba 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 All the drama. Are you sometimes an idiot? Yeah, so what? So this is what, this is what, uh, this is what uh, she did. She said, oh my God, you're so smart. You figured out I was an idiot in just one minute. It usually takes people three months to figure that out about me. Woohoo! You're great. Now what did that do? The, immediately the client apologized, but you're not being defensive. You see, you're not being defensive. You're using humor to diffuse the conflict of the situation. So, try it in life. Think of something that somebody has called you, and rather than getting defensive, go, got it. Yes, I am. Matter of fact, and insert the exaggeration. People love people who don't take themselves so seriously. Pause the video now and work on it. Let's practice the making fun of yourself exercise in life because every day somebody asks you, how are you? And every day you say, fine. Well, that's not 
funny. Fine are for civilians, not for funny people. So next time someone says, hello, how are you? Just tell them the truth. Watch this example of how this formula works. Every day someone's gonna ask you this one question. How are you? And what do you say? I am fine. Yeah, everybody's like fine. Everybody lies. You know, you are anything but fine. So why don't we find something about you that isn't fine, okay? Now, it could be something that people can see. <laughs> this. It could be something, you know, it could be like your personality. Humor is counterintuitive, but if you add this word, woohoo, after a complaint <laughs> about yourself, um, it you are actually transforming the very th defect that you think you have. So it goes like this, okay? I've got muffin top. Woohoo! <laughs> Practice this exercise in life. How are you? You're fat, you're insecure, you're having a bad hair day, and you got a new pimple right in the middle of your nose.